Y'all let me know if y'all hear about any, okay? What's up, Mom? What? Oh, thank you, Mama. Thank you for reminding me. I'm so glad. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for the offering. That's why I'm going to make y'all stay up. Next time I do the offering, I'm going to make y'all stay up here next time, so I remember to do that. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the offering today. We thank you so much for the gifts that are given. We ask that you continue to bless the givers and bless those that weren't able to give. Lord, let me use the gift to do your will and expand your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Mom. Appreciate it. The Christian life is compared to a pilgrim's journey, and, and the believers must learn to walk. We are to walk in Christ the same way we originally received Christ. And how was that, church? How do we receive Christ? I'm asking y'all. Through faith. That's right. Amen. You know, the Gnostic teachers, they wanted to introduce some new truths, quotation marks, for Christian maturity. But Paul denounced them. He said, you started with Christ and you must continue with Christ. Paul wrote, also wrote, you started with faith and you must continue with faith. This is the only way to make spiritual progress, friends. We receive Christ Jesus by confessing his lordship and turning away from sin. Paul commands us to continue to walk in the same way. Christians, we should not stray away from Jesus Christ by accepting the, the teachings of, of men no matter how good they sound and some of them sound pretty good i'll be honest with you some of them sound pretty good it's like you know i was telling i was telling uh, i was telling jesse and i was telling uh, sister Alyssa over here how I, I i grew a sunflower plant in my backyard i didn't mean to grow that sunflower plant but i kept growing a sunflower plant because it looked good people were giving me comments on facebook hey that's a pretty looking plant out there but you know what that plant did it destroyed the plants that i was really trying to grow the ones that i could eat you can't really like to eat sunflower seeds but i wasn't looking to eat sunflower seeds but the sunflower plant killed my melons. So the same thing happens with us if we allow, you know, these new philosophies that aren't centered on Christ, these, these things that tingle our ears, we allow them to take root. They will not allow us to grow. Just like my sunflower plant, it looked good, but man, it destroyed my stuff. I'm going to start over again, Jessica. I'm going to start from square one on that one. Uh, but Paul commands us to continue to walk the same way. So the word walk is one that's often used in the Christian life. It speaks of action and progress. You cannot walk and remain in the same place. In fact, in the Christian life, you're either walking forward or going backwards. But what does it mean to walk? Um, I think I got that in there. Go, go, keep on going down. Isaiah, go next, next, next. I think one more. Right there. They don't have you go back up. Or there you go. You're gonna go back up to the top ones, okay? First John states, this is the message we have heard from him that I announced to you and I announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you've guided me in preparation. I ask you to guide me in presentation. May everything I do bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Now go ahead and go back up to uh, Colossians there. Very uh, uh, One more up. One more up. There you go. Leave it right there. I'll get down a second. Thank you, Isaiah. Believe in Christians. We are born again through Jesus Christ. We start out just like we did when we came out of the womb. When we came out as babies, we start out not physically but spiritually we were reborn however just like our physical birth we start out as newborn babies when we are uh, babes in christ there are no christians i don't care who they are i don't care if they're kanye west no one is born into adulthood I meaning you just don't become a new believer and then you start preaching or you start a church the next day we are all born, we're all born babies. Our spiritual growing up from infants to adults is not sudden, and it's not necessarily easy. And y'all, I know we want things to be easy in life, but in the grand scheme of things, we really don't, because we don't learn. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to learn the hard way, but if I had everything easy, then I wouldn't learn to, to really appreciate things. I wouldn't let things soak in. I would remain a baby. 
It's just like when we have we have a uh, when we're when we're younger, we kids, we have mama does everything for us. Well, if mama still does everything for us. Guess what? We're never going to grow up. You know, the average time it takes to develop a proficient fighter, a boxer, is three years. Three years. I had a, a friend of mine. He said, well, "How long is it going to take me?" I said, "It's going to take you three years." It's taken me 20 20 years, so I'm still learning. Uh, but I'm good at training folks. And I said, "Look, it's going to take you three years. Three years of hard training." Three years of dieting, three years of exercising, mainly learning, learn, learning the techniques. No one becomes a good boxer just overnight. Rocky Marciano, one of one of the greatest of all times, arguably, he would train so hard. He would train during his off season. He trained during his vacations. He never really took a risk. Rocky actually was the only heavyweight champion to retire undefeated. No one beat Rocky. The same dedication is expected from Christians. Well, I'm not asking y'all to go box, by the way. Unless y'all, unless y'all feel a little frisky, we can, we can, we can, I can help you out with that. But what I'm saying is that our dedication, our dedication to the Word, our dedication to being a believer, our dedication to each other, should be the most intense, the highest of intensity, y'all. And so, when we walk with Jesus, we will grow up. In our faith, every moment we make a decision to walk in darkness or light. Colossians states, "Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted up and built in built in Him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy or empty deceit, according to the human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ." For in Him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in Him, who is the head of all rule and authority. In Him you have also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with Him in baptism, in which you were also raised with Him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised Him from the dead. And you were dead in your trespasses and the circumcision of your flesh. God made alive together with him, having forgiven us, not some, but all of our trespasses. By canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. And he set aside and set it aside, nailing it to the cross. Maturity occurs when we are rooted in Christ. There's some more gardening terms for all y'all gardeners out there. Myself included. I think I'm. I think I'm learning it, y'all. I think I'm getting better. Uh, but we are firmly rooted. I like. I like the scriptures like that. It gives me. It gives me a visual. It gives me a visual because I'm. I'm. I'm the kind of. I'm the kind of person I need. I need it written in Crayola sometimes. I really do. I, I need. I need to see a picture. I need. I need it easy. I need to see. See a picture. And I see. I see what it means because we think of branches. We think of a tree. A tree is rooted in the ground. The branches itself do not take responsibility of stability because that's the job of the roots. This leaves the branches free to produce leaves and function as a tree. And the second one, there's two phrases we say built, uh, built in him and established in your faith. This brings to mind a house being built up and established on its foundation. The house won't sink because of the foundation, so the house is free to function as a house. When we are rooted in Christ and established on Christ, we are free to function. Guess what, y'all? Now lean in closely, pay attention. When we are rooted in Christ and we are established in Christ, we are free to function as he intended. This is what he intended for us to do, is, is, is to serve him, to be rooted in him. And not anything else, because if we if our spiritual life is rooted in anything else, it's just like I was saying in my garden. You can't mix certain melons with other plants. It's going to kill the melons. I told Jesse that and I told Alyssa that this morning. So the same concept is true when we allow other things to take root in our life that are not of Christ. OK, other things that are not of Christ. This is the same concept. What happens when we are not rooted in Christ? When things go haywire? I don't know about y'all, but I. I Things go haywire in my life sometimes. Does anybody here have a, have a carefree life? Things don't go haywire? Raise your hands. 
Let me know your, let me know your secrets. But when things go haywire and we're not rooted in Christ, we go back to our old ways. We go back to to to, to getting frustrated and getting you know taking our anger out on the ones we love. We go back to not being calm. We when when when, when the storms when the storms hit, we go back to cursing. We go back to whatever whatever it was that we did in our old ways because we're not rooted in Christ, y'all. <sighs> But we grow. We're growing and we're learning. Spiritual maturity and even mental maturity do not occur or so they do occur when we start to appreciate life experiences, y'all. Especially those life experiences starting from the moment that we accepted Christ and every step of the way that we made with him. Those who have done their best to walk the line for Jesus understand trust and value and love the lord with all their heart you know bennett my son bennett my six-year-old he doesn't pay the bills not yet <laughs> he doesn't pay the bills he doesn't cook the meals he doesn't even buy his he doesn't buy his clothes well he can't buy his clothes yet but yeah he still complains about those things right he doesn't cook the meal and he's you know he, he just oh, i don't like this or make me another one and then you make him one he's oh, i don't want that you get upset with him. Uh, but, you know, he's getting better. He's learning. He's maturing. I see that he's maturing. He's still very much a six-year-old, okay? He's not like boss baby. He's not born and grown up yet. That's what I think we are. I think it's, I think it's some Christians. I think we think we're, I think that, I think we're, we're, we're boss baby already. We're born, we're born maturity. We're not boss baby. I don't want to be boss baby, by the way. I don't want to be Alec Baldwin. But, He's learning, but for those who might, and I don't, I, I don't use the word older in my sermons anymore. I try not to. Those are my Christians who are seasoned, okay? Do we agree on that word? Is that the word we're going to use? Okay, I just want to make sure. Those are my Christians that are seasoned. You, my brothers and sisters, guess what? Think about this. I want y'all to think about this, my seasoned Christians, okay? You are, you are seasoned, okay, seasoned. You've had more breaths you've taken. You've had more opportunities to see beauty. You've had more, more opportunities to experience love, more opportunities to experience happiness, more opportunities to learn, and more opportunities to grow. So my seasoned friends, you should be more thankful the more seasoned you become. Those who are less grateful indicate less maturity. Maturity occurs when we build, we build on knowledge, on the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Many people are taken captive through many different forms of philosophy that are deceptive and they lead many astray. Paul was concerned that no false teacher takes Colossian believers captive through hollow and deceptive philosophies. He wrote not against all philosophy, but against false philosophy. Okay. So as the Bible also speaks against false religion, same thing, false philosophy, false religion, same category, okay? And there are good philosophies out there. If the philosophy is something that expands on Jesus and only Jesus, okay? All right, not Jesus plus this. Not Jesus and then let's mix in a little bit of this with Jesus. But if philosophy is all about Jesus and everything in that philosophy leads to Jesus Christ, then it's good philosophy, okay? But the problem is, though, is that we have a lot of traditions of men, traditions of religious teaching that have been by men. And, you know, and, and quite frankly, it might hurt some of us to hear this. If a new Christian from, from the other side of the world, if they came over to our, our, our churches over here, even our church too, and they saw some of the traditions that we have, they would, they would see traditions that aren't supported by, God, by God's word. Our man-made traditions are usually more important to us sometimes than God-given doctrines. But don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with church traditions, y'all. I'm all about church traditions because they remind us of our godly heritage. But when we, we must be careful not to make these traditions equal to the Word of God. True Christian philosophy takes captive every thought, like I said, every thought, to make it obedient to Christ. What's philosophy? Well, I'm glad you asked. Philosophy is the love of wisdom. 
But if one loves the wisdom that is not Christ, then guess what? They love an empty idol. That's all it is. Such one will always be learning, but never able to acknowledge the truth. There are many out there like that today. We have many of these dangerous philosophies, y'all. Look, now listen, listen up, y'all. Give me an amen if y'all still paying attention. I am kind of concerned about the November election. I'm not. I'm not worried. Who's? I'm not. I'm not at all concerned who's going to be president. Okay, that's in God's hand. I'm more concerned on how we're going to behave as Christians because of what I saw in 2020. What did I see in two? And I made my mistakes. I'll be the first to tell you. I, I, there's some sermons I wish I, I didn't preach. Now I didn't preach. I, I don't. I never preach on sound doctrines, but. There are sermons that I think have gotten a little too political. But I looking back at 2020, it, it was it was just wild to see how many Christians got caught up in all these crazy political philosophies, you know? And that's the thing. And I'm not I'm not gonna go through all of them. I'm not gonna do that today. I don't want to open up a can of worms here in the pulpit. But I want to say is that be careful coming election year that we don't get caught up in the nonsense. What is Hebrews 12, 2 says, keep your eyes focused on Jesus, for he's the author and perfecter. He's the first place finisher of the race. So why are we focusing on other stuff? Jesus is the prize and always has been and always will be, my friends. Stay focused on Jesus. So I'm concerned about that, but I think we'll be fine as long as we just follow the word. OK, and I know some folks, some folks have gotten upset with me from time to time. Not a lot, but I. I, I will say this is that if, 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 if false doctrine comes to close range to this congregation, then we're going to fire it down with the word of God. The kind of philosophy, this kind of philosophy is based on the world's principles, elementary principles. Maybe we refer to and I, like I said, I've, I've never seen this here at Bethel. I'm mainly talking about the political ones uh, is, is evil spirits who inspire such heresy. But at the end of the day, if it if it's not of Christ, it's evil, y'all. Okay, let's just let's just not let's not sugarcoat it. Um, it's a Christian responsibility. It's our responsibility to know biblical philosophy. And y'all, I, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, it it's not rocket science. Okay, I've said that before. You don't need me to translate it for you. I love preaching. I love my job, but you don't need me. All you need is a heart for Jesus. OK, all you need is a heart for Jesus and take the time to study the word. Take the time to pray in the word. Take the time to fellowship with each other. Not just outside, not inside here, but outside the walls. OK, that's how we stay in line. OK, so what I'm saying, if we if we, if we look at it and follow in Christian doctrine, OK, don't get me wrong. There are some profound preachers out there. There's profound you know, men of God that I love to study, but I don't need them. I love Charles Spurgeon, but I don't need Charles Spurgeon. I need Jesus. We all need Jesus. You know, the other thought through this, I'm going to have some, let me, y'all, y'all are going to let me have some fun real quick before I close out, all right? Because I'm going to tell y'all, I, I, I do have, I do, I did have, I do have, a, I do have a problem. I did have a problem. And, you know, the other false doc school of thought was that, um, I'm going to get to that in a second, is that, and this is part of it was that angels in heavenly bodies they they influence people's lives this is slightly true but dangerously false when you empower demonic and even angelic beings without acknowledging the lordship of jesus christ okay robert brother robert taught an excellent study on angels i wanted to let y'all know that everything that he did though of those angels they led to jesus okay but when you study the angels without jesus when you study these, these, when you say focus on these demonic, these, you know, studying the demons and stuff like that, that's bad. You don't want to study that stuff. Let me tell you, any Christian that dabbles in mysticism or the cult, you're asking for trouble. Straight up. But I like Brother Robert's study because everything he did about those angels, it led to Jesus, okay? Y'all, y'all, y'all getting the picture here? Okay. We always have to go to Christ. Let me tell you my problem. I had a really, I had, I had trouble. You know, not recently, but years back, accepting the fact that UFOs are demonic. 
They are. Why? Because I was a Star Trek nerd, y'all. <laughs> I grew up on Star Trek. I, Star Wars is all right, but I was Star Trek. So as, as a kid, I, I, I fantasized. And there's nothing wrong with fantasizing about being in outer space and being a kid. But then I started hearing as I got older, I, and, and even today I, I hear Christians who think that that you know that these UFOs are, are carrying angels inside them. That's just crazy, y'all. Look, if it does not lead to Jesus, it's demonic and satanic. And at the end, we are, and I believe we are in the end times. I don't think we think we are. We're going to start seeing crazy stuff. The devil's going to try to mislead us, okay? But I have friends who think that there's there's angels inside those UFOs. But let me tell you what what, they're, what, what I realize is that, and they're Christians, because they know the word of God. I, I have a friend who's, gosh, he amazing how much he knows I try to get him to come to church that's the problem guess what they're not in church so when you're not in church Christ in church you are susceptible you're you're making yourself vulnerable to falling for these crazy false philosophies out there okay and, and some of that's what the devil's gonna do he's gonna make it sound good he, he ain't gonna he ain't gonna try to throw a dog treat in front of you <laughs> I mean not if you're a dog he might but I mean you guys are dogs. He's gonna throw. He's gonna throw a T-bone steak dinner out there for you. Look how good this looks. Don't take the bait. Most Christians who are susceptible to UFOs, aliens, and life on another planet, uh, you know, intelligent life, or, or just just the occult in general. And you you could argue with me after church. I've said if you want to talk to me after church about this, but this is my stance on it. I ain't gonna change it. Okay, I, I, the, those things are are demonic. But you can talk to me about it. I, that's before I get into that, I want to say another sign of Christian maturity. Let me just say this real quick. Is I've had people who, who, who said, well, Pastor, I didn't like what you said in the sermon. But I've seen signs of maturity. When you come to me and tell me that, that's a sign of maturity. When you talk to your pastor one-on-one -on -one about this, that's a sign of maturity, okay? So it's okay. Uh, and, I, and I think that, that, that encourages me. But just the occult in general, people that fall for that stuff, they're not in fellowship, okay? They're not in church. Okay, they're not hanging out with like-minded believers. You should feel awkward, by the way, if you're if you're if you're a Christian. I went through my I went through my phase when I when I when I when I had to kind of I had to kind of get rid of my party buddies, I guess, so to speak. Because you know why? It felt awkward hanging out with people just getting getting drunk and hanging out. I wasn't. I used to. But then when I went to the crowd, oh my friend, one of my friend, one of my good friends, he'd come, he'd come down from um, Washington D.C. all the time. He was a real good buddy of mine, and uh, I'd go see him, and he was still doing the same thing that he did, same thing he did in high school, same same place in Portland. You can drive by, and I won't say what street it is. There's a street they drive on, and they all hang out and they get drunk in front of the garage. You know, you should feel awkward, and it's good if you if you're if you're out of place. As a Christian, you should feel awkward. You shouldn't feel in place. I, I felt out of place. I feel out of place when I go to places like that. And I pray for people that that are still that are still living that lifestyle that they they, they turn that lifestyle around. So, through conviction, we should be able to see and feel things of Christ and things that aren't of Christ. Christ will give you the knowledge. You don't need it. You don't need me. You don't need. You don't need a special special window because you, as a believer, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have the, all the power of the Holy Spirit. Just seek Him. All fullness. You know why? Because all fullness is in Christ and you have been made full in Him. Let us pray. Also, why would you want anything else if you had all that fullness? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this sermon today. We thank you for, for everybody that's here. We want to thank you for, for, for everything that you've done, Lord. We help, We ask that we, we pray that we keep our eyes on you, keep focused on you. We pray against any evil that, that tries to distract or hinder. Because you can't stop the word of God. You can't stop Jesus. But they can definitely try to hinder us. We pray against that. We thank you for the families that are here. We thank you for all these kids that are here. So great to see these kids here. We might have had a light crowd here today, but we had a heavy crowd of kids here. 
We love our kids. I want to thank you for uh, Alyssa and Danny being here. I want to thank you for the Gillette family. I want to thank you for all the families here. We ask that you just continue to keep us and protect us in Jesus' name. Amen. I dare not end a sermon without offering a lifeline. If you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, make a profession of faith today because tomorrow is not promised. If you'd like to renew that profession of faith, if you want to come and just rededicate your life to Jesus Christ, you may do that. Come see me now. Come get with me after church. If you need special prayer, come up here during the now or during the hymn. Uh, start typing them in, folks that are on the feed. Start typing those prayer requests in. Y'all are usually pretty good about that. Uh, thank you. If you're interested in, in this church or joining this church or want some information about this church, meet with me, Brother Robert or, 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 or Brother Gillette back there. We'd love to talk with you. Thank you. Hey, Lucy. I do I'm watching. Father, Lord, we come to you knowing that in you is hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. We know, know that prayer isn't a good luck charm, but we come to you now to let our hearts become one with yours. Help us to be fully alive to your holy presence, Lord, and fold us in your love every day. Lord, inspire us to live in the freedom you intended with a heart untroubled and with a complete trust in you, Lord. We know that when we turn to you, there is no need for words. You can see into our hearts. You know our desires. You know our needs. We place ourselves into your loving hands, Father. I pray these things through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.